Here's everything that happened in Avatar The Last Airbender Episode 2, Warriors. So we start off this episode with the gang flying on Appa, going over to Kiyoshi Island, which I love Kiyoshi Island because I love the Kiyoshi Warriors. They are A-plus baddies. Like the outfits, the makeup, just the warrior style is everything to me. They will you up in a heartbeat. Like, don't even try them. So when they land on the island, obviously they're met with a little bit of resistance. And obviously that's putting it lightly because these warriors, they, the Kyoshi warriors, the Kyoshi Island, everyone on Kyoshi Island, I should say, they don't want outsiders. They like to be separate for a reason. They have been separate for a reason. They don't want conflict. They want to be separate. They want to be left alone. This is how they've avoided conflict this whole time. This is how they've been left alone from the Fire Nation and from conflict. It's allowed them to stay peaceful this whole time. So of course they're like, mm -hmm, what do you want? But of course, after but after a little bit of back and forth, Miss Elder Kiyoshi was like, all right, we'll let you stay here, but only for 48 hours. And then you got to go because we don't want any problems. And of course, Aang and the gang was like, fine. One of the main things I want to point out is the attention to detail in the setups, the architecture, things like that. I really love that they maintain the integrity of like the Kiyoshi culture, because for me, culture is everything. I love and appreciate other cultures so much. And when I was younger, fun fact, I actually got to go to China for 28 days. I went to Beijing, Hong Kong, Xi'an, Suzhou, and Shanghai, and it was life-changing. So I really, really, really love experiencing other cultures and just seeing things just accurately represented. So obviously the Kyoshi, you know, world and that culture is obviously made up, but just being able to see it being accurately depicted and represented, you know, being reflected from just the TV show. It just was nice to see all the attention to detail is my point. And I really loved that. Now enter Suki. Now Suki, as you know, if you saw the animated show, she is very like, she's a baddie. She a badass warrior, but she's also very protective of her village. She's protective of her people, her culture, her traditions, but she's also very condescending towards Sokka because he's like, you know, he walks in and he's like, you know, I'm a warrior. I protect my village. And she's like, bro, what village are you protecting? If you're here right now, who's protecting them? And she, she kept that. She maintained that kind of condescending tone towards him in this live remake. And I loved that she nailed it. So then we flash forward to Prince Zuko. He's looking up some plans, him and General Iroh. And I just can't help but feel like he's not as spicy as he's supposed to be. Like him and Commander Zhao, I'm like, you're both supposed to be pretty spicy and I'm not getting that spiciness yet. I'm like, you're, they're both like very reserved, you know? Like I understand in the Nickelodeon version of this, like it's Nickelodeon, it's gonna be PG, it's gonna be toned down, but I feel like this is Netflix and I feel like you're allowed to be a bit spicier, a bit more aggressive, a bit more confrontational, and not just in like fighting style, but just like the thematics of it and like the elements of it. And I'm just like waiting for them to be a bit more confrontational, a bit more aggressive, a bit more like mean spirited. And I'm like, come on Prince Zuko, like where's the badassery, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just like waiting for that and I'm not getting it yet. But again, we're only into episode two. So like, we still have a little ways to go, but I'm just kind of like, I'm not feeling that Prince Zuko vibe that I feel like we all know should be a certain way. It's not there yet. So then we flash back to the Kiyoshi training scene and Sokka's outside and he's like trying to, you know, mimic what they're doing and kind of learn from them because of course he feels like he is like this amazing warrior, which like props him for feeling that way. But obviously the Kiyoshi warriors are like trained assassins, basically. Like they are the shit when it comes to being like these super ultra warriors. And I absolutely love that. So he's outside and kind of like playing along and like doing his thing and, you know... Suki sends away the warriors that were inside training and then she ends up having a little moment with him and kind of gives him his own little training moment and they like lock eyes and it's a cute little moment. Now we flash forward a little bit more and Aang is up at the statue of Avatar Kyoshi. Then Aang actually goes into his little spirit world moment and actually connects with Avatar Kyoshi. And correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Avatar Roku the first previous avatar that Aang connects to or connects with in the animated show? Wasn't it Avatar Roku and not Avatar Kyoshi? I mean, I've seen the show eight trillion times, but like I'm drawing a blank and I literally just watched this show. Like I rewatched it again, like a week ago, but like I'm having a moment. So I could be wrong, but I just feel like it wasn't Avatar Kyoshi as far as like the first Avatar he connects with, but I could be wrong. Either way, while he's having this conversation with Avatar Kyoshi, the Fire Nation troops led by General Zhao, who kind of intercepted the plans that Prince Zuko was planning, which was to, you know, confront the Avatar on... 
Kiyoshi Island. He comes up on this island and is like, well, 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 what do we have here? And basically alludes to the fact that he knows that the Avatar and his friends are on the island is, you know, basically poking around and obviously is looking for a fight. And, you know, the elder Kiyoshi lady was like, okay, you can look around. And then she's like, psych, does a little one, two punch, gives the one dude some whiplash, throws him to the ground. And then all hell is about to break loose. Then of course we flash back to the conversation between Avatar Kiyoshi and Aang and she's really aggressive with him. Like she is not one to play. And I know the conversation earlier between Aang and Sokka and Katara was like, you know, he wasn't understanding how Kiyoshi went from basically kind of like a peaceful person to like this badassery of an avatar. Like how did that mentality change between, you know, peace and love to like, no, like I need to crack the whip kind of metaphorically, but also like whoosh, with the fan and like beat some ass. But I'm like, you know, she did realize that while she wanted to be passive and kind of friendly and, you know, non-confrontational, like there is a time and place where you kind of have to put those, you know, morals and beliefs aside and do what's best for the world. And what's best for the world is sometimes confrontation and kind of like setting people straight. And, you know, she was having this conversation with him and kind of had to set him straight. You may be passive and neutral and not want to be aggressive and confrontational, but this is what's going to happen. And then she ends up actually showing him a glimpse of the future, which is actually a foreshadowing to the Northern Water Tribe, which obviously is going to be down the road where, you know, the moon spirits come into play and all that kind of stuff, which you guys, obviously, if you haven't seen the show at all, I'm not going to spoil that for you, but that comes later. There's a huge, huge fight, a little bit of a teaser, a little bit of a spoiler, but there's a huge fight. So, you know, he sees what, that some crazy shit's about to happen. And, you know, she's basically telling him, like, you need to make some decisions because shit's about to go down. Like, you need to figure out who you are, you know, what you're going to do for the world and start acting now because time's running out. But she definitely was not playing around with that conversation and she was just telling it to him straight. Like, now is not the time to diddly daddle and kind of figure out who you are. Like, you need to figure it out right now. Like, there's literally no time to waste. Also, for like a moment of comedic relief, you see Momo flying around and he's literally chucking fruits at some of the Fire Nation soldiers and literally wiping them out. And I thought that was hilarious. Then Avatar Kyoshi was like, bro, you really want to see what the Avatar can do? You really want to see the power that we possess? And she was like, <laughs> and she literally takes over his body, obviously. She comes crashing down right as Prince Zuko is about to throw a little ball of fire at Katara, who's on the ground. She's like, help me. And she just starts wiping out soldiers. She starts throwing all the elements all over the place, which I didn't actually like that because in the animated version, it was very rare, if not, I don't think it even happened at all, where the Avatar is controlling all the elements, like until the very, very end of the show. Usually when an Avatar took over his body, it was usually like one element because I remember like when, you know, Avatar Roku took over Aang when he was at one of the temples on Avatar Island or Roku's Island, I mean, you know, it was just all fire, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Um, and when he was on Kyoshi's Island, it was just Kyoshi and it was just all earth, you know, bending and stuff like that. So in this moment, I don't think it made sense for Avatar Kyoshi to start throwing around fire and she, you could see her bending water and air. Like, I know that the Avatar can bend all the elements, but like in that moment, it should have just been strictly earth bending as Avatar Kyoshi, you know what I mean? In that moment, just to keep it true to like the original show. That's all I'm saying. I don't think all the elements should have been bent at that moment, even though obviously the fully realized Avatar can do that. I just think it should have been kept the original way. That's all. But that's the recap for episode two. Episode two was fantastic. The pacing was great. Be on the lookout for my recap for episode three coming soon.